Hey, you. Do you want to decide what I say during these opening seconds? Head to Patreon to find out more. Ooh. Spyro the dragon! Hey Spyro, press the jump button. Goodbye! You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never- Ah yes, a Spyro remaster is coming. You could have set your watch by it, really. After the success of Insane Trilogy, and the fans asking in droves for Spyro to get the same treatment, myself included. The developers behind this new reignited trilogy are Toys for Bob, the same folks who brought us Disney's Extreme Skate Adventure, Tony Hawk's Downhill Jam, and the Skylanders games. Wonderful! However, far more relevant to Sushi Bites, these same folks developed Majoko Daisakusen, Little Witching Mischiefs. That's right. Under the wing of Crystal Dynamics, Toys for Bob made a truckload of video games between 1994 to the year 2000. One of those was Little Witching Mischiefs. Since then, the creators of the game, Paul Ritchie III and Fred Ford, have discussed the development of the game for the Matt Chat podcast. So the contract was signed <laughs> before we knew what we were making. And, and all we knew is the fax was going to start churning out the images. And it's like this girl from the 60s with a magical makeup kit. And we're like, what? <laughs> and they just kept coming and coming and coming. The bugs towards the end of a development cycle, particularly on a console, get really technical, you know. The player is unplugging the joystick while yanking the memory card in and out and opening the disk box. And you have to sort of, even in English, really what are they talking about? And we would just get the facts, we just start rolling in Japanese with these bug reports, and eventually we just shut the facts off. <laughs> that was sort of the end of the development of that game. It's like, we think it's good enough, and we're not talking anymore. <laughs> We've never met one person who's played it. So if you're out there and you played it, let us know how it was. Way ahead of you, buddy. Way ahead of you. We have them turning off the fax machine to thank for this game getting released on time. And let me tell you, I'm glad it's a thing. I don't like strategy games all that much. In fact, I can't stand them most of the time, but especially when they're in Japanese, because it's chock full of hiragana and kanji, and the systems are always so complicated. Because this is a strategy game probably aimed at little girls, it's as simple as apple pie and twice as sweet. Also, it forgoes turn-based battles for real-time fighting scenes, which is a very refreshing touch. The game is based off several Magical Girl properties owned by Toei, and I'm probably going to butcher all of these, but I'll do my best. Maho Sukai Sally, Himits no Akuchan, Maho Sukai Chappie, Cutie Honey, Majoko Meguchan, Hanano Ko Lunlun, and Maho Shoujo Lalabelle. If this sounded like nonsense to you, imagine how the California-based development team must have felt. These series are beloved in Japan, it's their Hanna-Barbera if you will. So in 1999, it was decided they'd create this huge line of crossover media based around these series, some hailing back all the way to the 60s. They released Gashapon, special animation, loads of material. And part of this revival was the video game for PlayStation, which is a quality little strategy game. It's mostly in Japanese, I should have a hard time understanding what's what. But it's been developed with a western kind of design philosophy in mind, making it more approachable. Generally speaking, it's one campaign mode that can be played as each of the seven selectable scintillating witchy protagonists. This sets up which arrangement of units you have access to, based around each show. It also affects which NPCs appear from time to time to give you a hand. The maps are in 3D, which is nice. 
dotted around are some smaller 3D objects such as buildings and some 2D objects like trees. It has a diorama feel to it, which is very cute. Almost like a Polly Pocket, I guess. I'm, I'm just guessing. I, I never had a Polly Pocket as a kid. Okay, believe what you want. Your units and the enemy's units exist on a hexagonal grid, and in each turn you can move your units a predetermined number of spaces and perform an action, attacking, magic, standing your ground. If you place your units onto a coloured panel, you will gain mana next turn. The panels change in colour depending on how much mana they contain. Mana is used to spawn new units should any of these creepy people die during the action. There are also these swirly, swirly things. Land on top of those and you'll get taken to a short minigame. Completing that gets you a huge boost of EXP, so it's recommended you do all of those. The units are represented as a 2D image, but when they move around the map they become a 3D model. Presumably this is done for performance reasons, but it also adds a quaint charm. The underneath of this is a solid, well-constructed strategy game. I genuinely dig the hell out of this. Which isn't something I expected to say about any strategy game ever. This game certainly washes away the taste of last week's game. Ugh, it still lingers. Bandai, Crystal Dynamics and Toys for Bob have brought us something truly of its own. Unlike other strategy games with a strange choice of source material. If you can stomach the samey gameplay, there's seven different character sets to play through the game with. My personal recommendation is pick the one you think looks coolest and play the campaign. Even if only for half an hour or so, appreciate what this game has to offer. It's fascinating to see how a California-based company developed a Japan-only strategy game based on shows that have little to no exposure in the West. This has been Sushi Bites. Thanks for watching. If you're still here, I'm going to try and keep you watching some more. If you're not interested in the game but want to explore the magical girl genre some more, we have excellent Sushi Bites episodes on Cardcaptor Sakura and Sailor Moon. If you want to support the channel, there's Patreon. If you can't afford to do that, liking the video, leaving a comment, and spreading the video around helps a great deal. Your support shall always be rewarded. Thank you for your time.